I'm trying to show you all the structures we tried to explore uh, from the last one week and uh, pre-med students, uh, sorry MD1 students missed uh, some part of it. So what we did uh, in the previous one week was we tried to explore the pectoral region. We already reflected the skin and superficial fascia so that the students can directly see the muscles. So this is the pectoralis muscle. Okay, it has a clavicular head and sternal head. And we cut through the clavicular head and the sternal head to reflect it for later. So this is deltoid and you can see a vein vein going through the deltoid between the deltoid and the pectoral clavicular head of the pectoral um, like pectoral muscle now this is uh, cephalic vein is going towards the, the the gap between the deltoid and pectoral so when you reflect it let's reflect it again so when you reflect it we can clearly see the cephalic vein that joins the okay, okay. cephalic the cephalic vein that joins the axillary vein here okay now this region is has the fascia which we already dissected out is clavi pectoral fascia where you can find the thoracoacromial artery okay cephalic vein itself and lateral pectoral nerve which supplies the um, pectoralis major for its movement that comes from the lateral branch of the uh, sorry lateral branch of the lateral cord now we reflect the pectoral muscles completely and we cut the pectoralis minor muscle and we reflect it okay some of the nerves that supplies the pectoralis minor that is the medial pectoral nerve has not been secured in this place it was already being cut and then we can see the branches of the brachial plexus being dissected out the area for the brachial plexus is exposed now we have to identify some of the muscles here this is the long head of biceps this so short head of the biceps and this is the long head of the biceps just beneath on the medial aspect you can find coracobrachialis okay so how do we find the lateral cord is we have to identify one nerve that is going to pierce the coracobrachialis that is the musculocutaneous nerve which pierce the coracobrachialis and later on comes in between the biceps and brachialis muscle lying below so this is the continuation of the musculocutaneous nerve if we provide a traction we can see the musculocutaneous nerve on that area moving having identified the lateral pectoral nerve already that muscle equity is now with the next branch the third branch is the lateral part of the median nerve so this is lateral branch that goes to the median nerve and combined with the medial branch that comes from the medial cord they form median nerve that is going down below which will be explored later on okay. now next to it there's a big nerve which supplies the medial aspect of the arm and the uh, which is uh, cutaneous as well as the muscular supply that is a ulnar nerve there is a small nerve that comes which we secured we were able to secure was medial cutaneous nerve of the forearm so if we go posterior to the axillary artery here we can find radial big radial nerve which will leave the upper arm and go to the posterior aspect of the arm now you can see the brachial veins running into tributaries along these structures if we trace the some of the branches of axillary artery you can find a terminal branch of the axillary artery then it becomes the brachial artery this branch is profunda 
sorry that is the brachial artery the branch is profunda brachial artery This is the circumflex humeral artery, okay, going passing behind and going posteriorly along with the axillary nerve. This is axillary nerve. So this is circumflex humeral artery. The profunda brachial artery is yet to come below, which travel with the radial nerve. That is the lateral cord of the brachial plexus and this is the posterior cord of the brachial plexus. That is the medial cord of the brachial plexus. That's all we 